Well, the Creed says he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. It's in the Apostles' Creeds, it's in all the major Christian creeds, and yet the ascension, what in the world does it mean? What's its significance for us? Does it really matter? Um, I think it matters tremendously. So let's talk a little bit about it. And in order to unpack that, we need to ask the question, well, what did it mean for Jesus? And then what does it mean for us as a result of what it meant for Jesus? Here's what it meant for Jesus. Three things, uh, essentially. First of all, Jesus, having been exalted and raised from the dead, has now been brought back into the fullness of the presence of God. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24 puts it like this. He entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God. Think about that for a minute, the fullness of the presence of God. The kind of intimate fellowship that Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, the Son, had known with the Father throughout all eternity, and yet which he had kind of laid aside and given up when he became flesh and dwelt among us. Well now, having been raised and now exalted to the Father's right hand, he has entered back into that. He was admitted back into the fullness of the face-to-face, -face, holy of holies, presence of God. That's one thing it meant for Jesus. Secondly, Jesus, having ascended and seated at the right hand of God, now possesses all divine power and authority. Paul says it like this in Ephesians chapter 1, God has placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything. And in Psalm 110 verse 1, the most oft quoted Old Testament verse in the New Testament, um, it says, sit at my right hand until I make all your enemies a footstool for your feet. Think about that. The power and authority, the power and authority to carry out the work of redemption and bring it to consummation has been put in the hands of the risen, exalted Christ. Remember that he's sitting now at the right hand of God. The right hand of God, which throughout Scripture is synonymous with God's power and authority. Uh, there's a silly little story about this six-year-old boy who was out with his father one evening and it was just a beautiful night to see the sun go down. It was a beautiful breathtaking sunset and this little six-year-old he had never seen anything like that. All those colors coming together like that and he was kind of ooing and eyeing and uh, finally he just sort of blurted out to his dad, wow dad, God must have painted that with his left hand. Well, you know, the little boy was puzzled. I mean, this father was puzzled. He said to the little boy, why did you say his left hand? And the little boy said, well, you know, in, in Sunday school and in church, they keep talking about the creed. And doesn't it say that Jesus is sitting on his right one? Uh, well, no, Jesus isn't sitting on his right hand so he can't you know use his right hand no he's sitting at the father's right hand and that means all power and authority has been given unto him the father has said to the son sit at my right hand until i make your enemies a footstool for your feet so that's the second thing all power and authority has been given unto him and then the third thing jesus having been exalted and seated at the father's right hand has now assumed the posture of an intercessor, one who stands in the gap for us. Romans chapter 8, verse 34, Christ Jesus, it says, who is at the right hand of God, who intercedes for us. And Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, Jesus, our great high priest, always lives, it says, to make intercession for us. Jesus intercedes, he stands in the gap for us. He he pleads on behalf of the Father, on our behalf, and on behalf of those he died for. Charles Wesley uh, puts it like this in one of his great hymns, He ever lives above for me to intercede. His all-redeeming love, his precious blood to plead, 
five bleeding wounds he bears received on Calvary, they pour effectual prayers. They gladly plead for me, forgive him, oh forgive, they cry. Forgive him, or forgive, they cry, nor let that ransomed sinner die. So, there it is. He sat down with his father on his throne at the father's right hand. Those are the three things that meant for Jesus. And we might put it like this, holy of holies presence, right hand of God power, and a standing in the gap posture. And the good news is that because we are in Christ, as Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, we've been raised up and we are seated with him at the Father's right hand. And so now there's a sense in which everything that was true for Jesus is true for us. Uh, Holy of Holies presence. We get to live every moment in the presence, the Holy of Holies presence of God. Jesus is as near to us every moment of every day as he was to John at the Last Supper when John, remember, leaned over and put his head on Jesus' breast. Holy of Holies presence, right hand of God, power. God, Jesus gives us power so that we can reign in the midst of and rule in the midst of our enemies. And lastly, Jesus, who is this great intercessor, invites us to join him in this work of intercession, of standing in the gap with him on behalf of others. This leads to prayer, this leads to work, this leads to compassion as we work to be intercessors between others and the Father above. He ascended into heaven. That's what it meant for Jesus. That's what it means for us.